for the forgiveness of our sins and the sins of our marhumin together with the loudest of your voices coming up a loud salawat please for the zahoor of imam zamana ajjal allah farj sharif together with the loudest of your voices a loud salawat اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاه والسلام على سيد الاشرف الانبياء والمرسلين تبيب قلوبنا وتبيب نفوسنا ابل قاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد والصلاه والسلام على اهل الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين ولعنه الله على اعدائهم اجمعين قال عزوج الله في قران المجيد والفرقان الحميد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واستعينوا بالصبر والصلاه صدق الله العلي العظيم بلنتر الصلوات اللهم صل على محمد الحمد لله الله عزوجل has blessed us again by thanking Allah azza wa jalla for all the bounties that he has showered us with and even though every single day we disobey Allah every single day instead of moving towards Allah we are moving away from Allah azza wa jalla every single day instead of implementing on the teachings of ahlul bayt alay salatu was salam we decide to do do those things which are easier for us life as i have been saying from the first of ramadan life is a gift from allah azza wa jalla and when you are bestowed with a gift it is your job to utilize that gift in such a way that the giver of the gift is pleased with you and you as a user of that gift you are also pleased that you are utilizing that gift as i said life zindagi is a gift from allah azza wa jalla Let's take a second to try to understand are we fully utilizing this gift from Allah azza wa jalla Today it is the first of the night of Laylatul Qadr yani tonight it is the eve of the 19th of Ramadan 18 days of the blessed month of Ramadan have passed Now you need to ask yourself a question in these 18 days have we fasted according to the teachings of ahlul bayt alay salatu was salam or have we kept a fast in regards to just abstaining from food and water Amir al-Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib alay salatu was salam says that fast is not only this that you abstain from food and water because anyone can do that you see that alhamdulillah children as small as 7 and 8 alhamdulillah they are fasting do the children have a full understanding of ibadat no they don't do children have a full understanding of what wajibat are what mustahabbat what is recommended in deen what is wajib yani obligatory in deen 
they are fasting because they want to be a part of the community. Yani fasting is not even wajib upon a seven year old. But you see that he is fasting. We the elders on the other hand, when we are fasting, should our fast be different to a seven year old's fast? It should. What steps have we taken to make sure that our fast is that fast which has been taught to us by Muhammadan Ali Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam. And this is why we have been gathering every single night. And the topics that we have been trying to discuss are all topics that aim at changing ourselves. They are aimed at how to make a revolution inside yourself. What is the meaning of a revolution? A revolution is to change something for the better. Now, Ramadan has come. 29, 30 days of this blessed month of Ramadan, you are fasting for Allah Azza wa And after Ramadan, you are exactly as how you was before Ramadan. Then what have you learned from the blessed month of Ramadan? Yaqeenan by fasting, your stomach is purified. Your blood is purified. But have we actually purified our hearts and our minds? There are diseases which we know that affect the body. One of the main disease that it is known in society is the disease of the heart. A person who suffers with a heart attack means what does his heart is now becoming weak. Then we have diseases like cancer, which are not curable. People try to cure them, but this is one of the diseases that till today there is no specific cure for cancer. We as moments, we know every single disease. You ask somebody about diabetes, even though he does not have diabetes, he will give you 100 suggestions. Eat this, eat this and eat this, your sugar will be in control. Someone who is suffering from a heart problem, a person who doesn't even have a heart problem, he will give them advice. I have heard this, I have heard this, I have read this. A person who has many problems, you will see that other people will give you advice even though they have not experienced that disease, even though they do not know the ins and outs of that disease. But as a community, as moment, we are always able to give advice, whether it is right or wrong, that is besides the question. But we are always ready to give advice. Let's try to understand on this first night of Laylatul Qadr. On this first night, the divine night from Allah Azawajal, probably one of the nights of the Quran was revealed by the barakat of the Holy Quran, by the barakat of the wording of the Quran. Let's try to understand some of the diseases that do not affect the body but affect the soul. Yani, what I want to discuss today on this first night of Laylatul Qadr is those diseases those issues, those problems that affect a person's soul. If your soul is corrupt, if your soul is damaged, then your body is of no use. <coughs> Similarly, if you try to understand, if you have a computer, you have a brand new 2024 model. If that computer is affected with the internal virus, even though from the outside it's got a 4K HD, God knows ULED, OLED, so many names nowadays for technology. It has the latest appearance from the outside. But if it is affected with the virus inside, no matter how new that computer is, it is of no use for you. You can make your body as beautiful as you like. No problem. Islam does not stop you from beautifying yourself. 
you can go to the gym every single day walking you know doing weights doing whatever you think to make your body strong but if your soul is not strong if your soul is infected then this body is of no use you can have the most beautiful face but if your ruh your soul is infected with a disease then no matter how much beautiful face you have allah azwajal does not look at what a beautiful face you have allah does not look at if you are wearing gucci adidas nike branded names allah does not look at how many muscles you have allah does not look at whether you get up in the morning and you do your full facial allah looks at what is in the inside and that is your soul so diseases which affect the soul inshallah with the barakat of today's night inshallah we will try to change ourselves inshallah everyone together say inshallah inshallah, inshallah. we will try to change ourselves with the barakat of the vilayat of amir al mu'minin ali ibn abi salib alayhi salatu wassalam inshallah so the first thing the first disease which affects your soul soul you understand your ruh inside which makes everything tick yani your body is controlled by your brain and your brain is controlled by your soul your body and your brain will die but your soul will live on until yawm al qiyam your body will perish in the ground it will become food for worms and insects but your soul will live on inshallah so the first disease which affects the soul is self admiration self admiration means to always praise about yourself if i have a beautiful voice i will always say i have the best voice in the world if i have muscles i will always praise look at my muscles self admiration yani self praising yourself you will see many people they constantly just talk about themselves i have a good car i have a good house i have a good wife i have good children i have this i have that i have a good mobile he is always praising himself amir al mu'minin says that the first disease of the soul starts with the person who self praises praise should never come from yourself praise should always come from others how great do you think you are when someone says to you masha allah you have a very beautiful voice in reciting the quran not singing songs not rapping your voice should be used for islam again coming back to if allah azwajal has given you a gift yani this nose this mouth these ears these eyes this face this body these hands these legs these feet every single thing that you have has all been gifted to you by allah azwajal everything which is gifted the owner is who allah azwajal so you should use this mouth instead of praising yourself do the zikr of allah azza instead of praising yourself praise someone else instead of praising yourself do tilawat of the quran instead of praising yourself do the zikr of muhammad and ali muhammad these things will enlighten your soul will give light and life to your soul in such a way that you will be lifted yani instead of doing the opposite do something that moves you closer to allah azza so the first disease is what self praising self admiration talking about yourself all the time you see in our society there are certain people that when they are sitting amongst people the only thing that they talk about is themselves i did this today i bought a house today i bought land in pakistan I bought a car worth twenty thousand pound. I've got the iPhone fifteen. 
constantly talking about themselves. They are not worried whether the other person has eaten food or not. They are not worried why, whether the other person is in trouble or not. They are only worried about themselves. The Shia of Ali ibn Abi Talib, his first criteria in being a Shia is, he is more worried about others than he is worried about himself. This is the lesson from Ahlul Bayt. Imam Hussain went to Karbala, not for himself. Imam Hussain went to Karbala to save the religion of his grandfather Rasulullah. Imam Hussain sacrificed everything that he had so that me and you today we can sit and recite La ilaha illallah. Imam Hassan, from Imam Ali to Imam Hassan Askari, every single Imam went through hardships for who? For you, for me, for our families. Today that we can sit here, you know the last words of Imam Hussain were, what were the words that give my salam to my Shia? Imam Hussain 1400 years ago sent salam for you. Think for a second. If you walk in and you do salam to me and I ignore you, or I do salam to you and you ignore me, how do you think I and you will feel? We will feel insulted. When 1400 years ago, Imam Hussein sent salam upon his Shia, upon the Shia of Ali. Today we are not bothered about Deen. Today we are not bothered about the Quran. Today we are not bothered about the Sunnah of Rasulullah. Today we are not bothered about the Ahkam of Deen. Today we are not bothered about the upbringing of our children. Today we are not bothered about how our houses are. Today we are not bothered about our culture and our society, which way it is turning. Isn't that an insult to the Mawla, to the Aka that we all claim to be Azadar of? It is. So think about this tonight. The second thing, the disease of the soul is anger. Now, anger is one of the things that many people suffer with. It is one of the diseases which are very hard to get control of. A decision made in anger. It is one of the decisions that a person regrets for the rest of his life. Amir al muminin says, never take any decision when you are angry. Never make any decision when you are in the state of anger. Why? Because you will always regret that decision. Aimma have always taught us to control our anger. You know Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib al Islam when whenever our Mawla was angry he would even stop fighting. Why? Well, I would say, first I was fighting for Allah Azawajal. Now I don't want my nafs to come inside. And this is how anger was dealt with. And we always, mashallah, we see many people that you hear from people that anger is sitting on their nose. One minute, they're gone. One minute they are laughing. Next minute they are fighting. Some people like to joke with other people. But in return, they are not able to take the joke. When someone jokes with them, they become angry. So the third thing is what? Pretending to be something which you are not. Pretending to be religious in front of other people. Pretending to read namaz when at home you have never seen the face of the musalla. That sort of ibadat is not accepted by Allah. Never try to pretend to be something which you are not. Never pretend to be virtuous when you are not virtuous. Mawla says that the best person is he who is virtuous when he is alone. When you are alone, there is nobody with you. 
and if in that time you are getting close to Allah Azawajal, then inshallah in public Allah will shower you with these blessings. So always try to be virtuous, try to be good when you are alone. This is why the month of Ramadan, this blessed month, this is that act of fasting, which is a direct amal between you and Allah Azawajal. It is a direct connection between you and Allah Azawajal. Ramadan, you cannot say, and people cannot see whether you are fasting or not. Any other ibadah that you do, namaz, hajj, umrah, ziyarat, people can see. But namaz is also something that people can see you. But Ramadan is that blessing from Allah Azawajal, which is only between you and your Allah. Yani the third thing is pretending to be virtuous. That is a disease of the soul. And it eats your soul away. That is that disease that finishes you. Never pretend to be something. And never even pretend to be the she of Ali. When you on the other hand, when you on the other hand cannot even be 1% of the she of Ali ibn Abi Talib. The fourth thing is envy. Being jealous. That is also a disease of the soul which is now a problem in our society. All of our people, they are jealous. Hasad is that illness in our society that it is killing people. We are jealous if someone has bought a nice house, we are jealous. If someone is praised, we are jealous. If one idara is doing good, we are jealous. If one idara is having more majalis, we are jealous. If one majalis, as they've called someone good, we are jealous. If one child is doing good in school, we are jealous. Yani, our society is affected with this disease, which is killing our mu'maneen. And it is one of the diseases of the soul, which is killing people. We don't realize. Sometimes we don't realize how hasad and envy is destroying us inside. This is what we need to understand. This is how we need to change ourselves. Never be jealous of someone. If someone is doing good, do dua for them. If someone is doing good in life, do dua for them. If someone has more money, do dua that Allah gives them more. Aimma alayhi salatu wasalam said that if someone has something good and you do dua that Allah gives you more for that person, then rest with yaqeen, with certainty that inshallah Allah will also give you that thing. Praise someone, get used to praising others. Mu'maneen, change yourself. If you in front of your children, you are dealing with hasad yourself. Your chacha is doing good. Your mommy is doing good. You are talking bad about your family members in front of your children. You are talking and mentioning envy in front of your children. Then what do you expect your children to become? wali e khuda If you are swearing in front of your children, what do you want your children to become? Imam of the masjid? Yani tabliq starts from home. Educate your children first. Even if you are suffering with these diseases, don't pass this disease on to your children, for God's sake. Protect yourself and your children. And final thing, I think we have gone long enough. Final thing, the disease of the soul is backbiting. Backbiting is such a disease that the Holy Prophet said that do you want to eat the flesh of your brother? The companion said no. Backbiting is classed as eating the flesh of your own brother. That is how bad backbiting is. How do you think you will feel when someone talks about you behind your back? Someone talks constantly about you. Then why do you talk about someone else? If you can't praise someone, if you can't talk good about someone, then the best thing that you can do for yourself is to stay quiet. 
This is the issues that our calm, our community is affected with. If we can protect ourselves from these five diseases, self-admiration, anger, pretending to be virtuous, envy and backbiting, inshallah, if you can save yourself, your soul from these five diseases, then inshallah you will see that your life will change for the good. Your life will change according to how Muhammad and Ali Muhammad want you to. Inshallah, we do dua to Allah Azwajal. May Allah Azwajal, for the sake of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad, bless us all so that we can continue to follow in the footsteps of Ahlul Bayt. We pray that, especially all those people that are helping, that are paying towards the iftaris for Anjuman Ghulamani Aulad Zahra. May Allah Azwajal bless them in the risk and in the households inshallah especially today's beautiful iftari was kindly arranged by brother ghazamfar ali of street house we do dua ya ilahi for the sake of muhammad and ali muhammad bless ghazamfar ali inshallah in everything that he decides to do in his life ya ilahi bless Amen. his children and give barakat in his household for the sake of Muhammad and Ali, Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. Ya Ilahi, all the sawab that we have gained in this iftari, inshaAllah, during this lecture, inshaAllah, give that sawab in the names of all of his marhumin, mu'mineen and mu'minat that have passed away from this world. From his family, from his wife's family, from his nanka and dadka family, every single person that has passed away, give them a place in the jawar of Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib al Islatu Wasalam. Ya Ilahi, forgive our sins and the sins of our marhumin, inshaAllah. Ya Ilahi, hasan the reappearance of our 12th Imam, Imam Sahib al Asr al Zaman, together with the loudest of your voices, Allahumma ajil le waliye kal faraj. Allahumma ajil le waliye kal faraj. Allahumma ajil le waliye kal faraj. Rabbi salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Birahmati ka ya arhamar rahimin. Come, you have a loud salawat, please. Allahumma.